Hey guys, welcome to a quick video and this is going to tie in as both an announcements type video as well as a funding guide video. I wanted to do an updated version of the link skills guide because I had a lot of people still asking me what they are and how should I go about doing them. So I'll be making a quick video on link skills and the reason why I want to cover over it is because tomorrow they will be releasing another burning event which means that this is the perfect time for you to level up a link skill character as well as this weekend as compensation for the locked star force and transfer hammer and stuff due to the bug they will be giving us another 2x event, which is awesome because that's like the perfect time for you to start leveling up your characters. So I figured if I can get this video out tonight, then I can get you guys all set and ready to go for what to do with the burning event as well as the 2x event. So let's get right into it. For those of you guys who don't know what link skills are, link skills are essentially either passive or active innate abilities that are possessed by certain characters, uh, usually the more modern characters. And the way it works is that by upon reaching a certain level, your skill levels up, and then the higher level that Link Skill character is, the more powerful the Link Skill is, and that Link Skill can then be transferred over to another character by way of the Link Manager right over here. You can have up to 12 Link Skills active on a character in a single time. They can only be transferred once every 24 hours, meaning they can be only unlinked and relinked once every 24 hours or upon reset. And you can only have one Link Skill from each character, for instance. You'll notice I have two copies of the same Link Skill. I can't put both of them on the same character because that would be way too broken. However, you can transfer one copy of these link skills to one character and the copy to a different character if you would like to. For instance, my first Pirate's Blessing is on my Dual Blade, and my second Pirate's Blessing is on my Xenon. Anyways, I'm going to quickly go over what the individual link skills are, and then I'm going to talk about how do you want to go about getting your link skills for the newer players, and then I'll list off, I guess, like a tier of what link skills are more important. So first up, this is a Pirate's Blessing. The way Pirate's Blessing works is that every level it gives you a permanent increase of all stat and max HP and MP. What a lot of people may not know is that the innate stat component that it provides you of like strength, dex, int, and luck, it factors into your base stats, not as a bonus additive such as the arcane symbols. So this actually can scale with your percent luck or your percent stat. So I actually think despite it not being the most powerful skill, it can be somewhat beneficial for people who have high amounts of percent stat. Fury Unleash, which is the next link skill, it is the Demon Slayer's link skill and it's one of the more sought after ones because after they took away Nebulites, which reduced about I think 25% boss damage from all of our characters, it's been one of the link skills that you want to focus on getting to a higher level because it provides a lot of boss damage. Phantom Instinct, which is the Phantom link skill, provides you a critical hit rate. This is not nearly as important because some classes do have very high passive critical hit rate but other classes do not, so having Phantom Instinct to get your critical rate to 100% at all times, you know, it's pretty helpful. Keen Edge, probably one of the best link skills out there. It's the Hayato link skill, which gives you 25 all stat, which is similar to the Cannoneer link skill, but instead of giving you max HP and MP, it gives you attack and magic attack, which, you know, is arguably better. Elementalism, which is the Kana link skill, it gives you damage by 10%. Both Hayato and Kana link skills cap out at level 2. Some link skills can go up to level 3, with the exception of a few link skills going up to level 8 or 10. I'll explain that a little bit later. Luminous Link Skill ignores 15% or up to 20% of the uh, target's defense, which is ignore enemy defense or what many people might know as PDR. Um, this is also very contingent on what kind of class you have. If you have a class that has like a lot of innate ignore defense like a hero, then this may not be that important, but the way I see it is that you can never have too much PDR. I have this mostly on my Xenon because my Xenon has lower PDR than my Dual Blade, and I think my Dual Blade's PDR is good enough. Iron Wall's not really that good of a link skill, it used to be back when characters were pretty squishy, but now that uh, pretty much every character in the game is really strong, you don't really need Iron Will that much anymore unless you are a demon avenger, so instead of taking something like Hybrid Logic, you would take Iron Will instead, because this is very beneficial for a demon avenger. Hybrid Logic, one of the most useful link skills out there, it gives you 10% all stat, and that applies to every class of course other than the demon avenger. This is a must have and it also only caps out at level 2. Wild Rage gives you the exact same bonus as the Kana, it gives you damage percentage except it can cap out at level 3, which means this can go up to level or level 3, 15% damage. You have both this and Kana Link skill and it increases your damage up by quite a bit. Cygnus Blessing, now this is one of the first stackable Link skills that you'll run into and it caps out at level 2 per Cygnus Knight that you have up to level 10. I don't know if these can go up to level 3, yeah this is level 3 which is probably a visual bug but uh, it can only go up to level 2. And what this link skill does is it gives you status resist and um, elemental resist. Now this used to be one of the most potent link skills in the game back when status resistance calculated as like a chance to not get hit by a status effect. Now instead it just reduces the duration of the CC. So it's not really that important because you're going to get hit by it anyway. And even if you have like 80% status resist, it will only reduce your duration by like 53% or something. So it doesn't give you that much of an effect. 
Also, elemental resist, it used to be important back when bosses actually did flat damage, but now that they do percent HP damage, it doesn't matter at all. I mean, I still have it. It's decent to have, it's never a bad thing, but I just don't find it that important for min-maxing. Close call. Kind of a hit or miss link skill. The way this works is that you have a chance to get hit, or this is the shade link skill, but the way it works is that you have a chance to survive a fatal attack. It's a very low chance and only caps out at level 2. I wouldn't consider this the most valuable link skill in the game either. There is a much more reliable death skill that you can pick up. Judgment, which is the Kinesis link skill, it grants you 4% crit damage and it caps out at level 2. This does not seem like a lot initially, but trust me, 4% crit damage actually means quite a bit, especially if you have like a bonus of let's say 50 or more percent crit damage, and if you have a lot of crit rate. So um, take my word for it, it's actually a very good link skill and I recommend everyone gets one. Unfair Advantage is a rather situational link skill. It is the Kadena link skill, it caps out at level 2, and uh, against targets that have a lower level than you, so if you're level 236 and you're attacking a target that's like level 200, you will be doing 6% more damage to that target, plus another 6% if that target happens to be hit by some sort of crowd control. This is good on characters that have an easy way of applying a form of crowd control, which means like, you know, like even a tar even like targets that are affected by Venom. Venom does count as a form of status ailment, even though it does not actually like debilitate the target that you are attacking. So this is really good on adventure thieves like Shadow Warrior, Night Lord, and Dual Blade. Classes that can easily apply some form of crowd control like Fire Poison Mage's Poison, or Ice Lightning Mage's Slow. Unfair Advantage works pretty well. But um, this will be completely useless on, like, let's say, Will, because Will is level 250, so you'll never be higher level than him. But other than that, I would say this is a pretty good link skill for lower level bosses, or bo any target that just so happens to be lower level than you. It's uh, pretty situational. Spirit of Freedom, probably the one of, if not the most useful link skill in the entire game. No, there's, there are better ones out there. But Spirit of Freedom is one of them. Uh, Spirit of Freedom is the resistance link skill, and you can stack it up to level 8 uh, with your characters, and it also is a max level of 2. There are four resistance characters, the Blaster, the Battle Mage, the Wild Hunter, and the Mechanic, so you can only go up to level 8. But uh, the way Spirit of Freedom works is that after dying, when you revive, for a set period of time, you are completely invincible. You can't get hit by anything, you can't be touched by anything, you're like completely invulnerable to any CC, any damage whatsoever. And this goes up to 8 seconds, which means, you know, you might run into bosses, especially the endgame bosses, they tend to spawn kill you after you die. And this will basically prevent you from dying for, you know, at least a decent amount of time for you to get your bearings back. I highly recommend this link skill for any person who wants to take on any bosses of any kind. Rune Persistence is the Evan link skill and it is one of the most important link skills out there. It increases the buff duration of your rune. Not only does that increase the buff duration of the rune, like let's say if you have a rune of swiftness, it lasts a little bit longer, a rune of destruction, it lasts a little bit longer. What's most important is that this rune enhances the buff duration of the experience bonus, because you guys know, by activating a rune, you get 100% bonus experience. That's the main reason why people go for this link skill, because it's actually really strong, and I actually do recommend you take it to level 3. Combo Kill Blessing is, um, it's beneficial, just not that substantial. The way it works is that you know how every time you get a kill, or a certain amount of kills, like 10 kills I think, or 100 kills, you get like this orb that spawns, and uh, you guys know how like when you pass through the orb, it gives you like a little bit of experience and a movement speed bonus. That's what this skill is for, it increases the marble experience, like that orb, not too much, because the orb's base experience is not that great anyway, but I guess it helps for training. We have Solace right here, which is the Arc Sling skill. Now, this is a very powerful link skill. The way it works is that every time you're in combat, every 5 seconds you do 2% more damage. Your total damage increases by 2%, plus a base of 1. And if you have the level 3 link skill, it increases by 3% per stack up to a cap of 5. Which means at level 2, you'll have 11% total damage. And at level 3, you have 16% total damage, so you factor that in with, let's say, the Kana Link skill and the Demon Adventure Link skill, you'll be doing quite a bit of damage. Elven Blessing is probably the most important Link skill in the entire game, because literally what it does is it increases the amount of experience you get permanently, no matter what. And uh, I think this is probably the first Link skill you ever want to level up, but I'll explain a little bit later about like what Link skills you want to prioritize first, but uh, Elven Blessing is the Mercedes Link skill, and it's uh, probably one of the best ones. Knight's Watch is the Mihail Link skill, and it basically gives you 100% knockback resistance or stance for a period of time. This is only good on classes that do not have stance. Many classes these days do have stance, so I don't recommend it. However, a lot of mages tend to not have stance, like uh, Ice Lightning, Fire Poison. But the thing is, there are a lot of abilities, especially I think the mages have a Universal Magician and Fifth Job skill that gives you stance in exchange for just taking more damage to your MP. So I don't think Night's Watch is that important anymore, but back then, when not many classes had stands, it was actually pretty beneficial. Terms and Conditions is a very big burst effect. Now, Night's Watch and Terms and Conditions both are active effects. 
Uh, well, Alvin Blessing does count as an active effect too. It just sends you back to LUL, which is a uh, like a teleport. But uh, Night's Watch and Terms and Conditions are activated effects. And Terms and Conditions, what it does is the Angelic Buster Link skill. It increases your damage by a whopping 30, 45, or 60 percent. It does only last for 10 seconds, but that's usually enough for you to use like one big burst ability like our dual blade, we would use it with uh, Blade Tempest or Asta's Anger or what have you. You guys get the idea. It's a very good link skill to just give you a huge spike in damage, and uh, I do recommend you pick this up for any class. Focus Spirit is the Beast Hammer's link skill. It increases your boss damage, your crit rate, your HP, and your MP. This one's also good. Not like the best one out there, but it's like a pretty good all-around link skill to have. It increases your critical hit rate, which a lot of classes need, and it gives you boss damage, which is never a bad thing. Now, there are two more link skills that I did not cover. The first one is Zero's link skill, which is Renee's Blessing, and the way it works is that it reduces the amount of damage you take, and it also gives you Ignore Defense up to 10%, so it's kind of like a mix of Luminous's link skill, which is right over here, plus it just gives you a little bit more tankiness. I don't find it to be that valuable, just because... Incoming damage reduction of 15% doesn't matter when bosses do percent HP damage and that doesn't count towards that. But the 10% PDR, I guess it helps. I just think there are much more valuable link skills because you only have a maximum of 12 anyway. And then the other one that I do not have is Ilium's link skill, which is Tide of Battle or Flow of Battle, depending on what game you play. It's similar in function to Arc's link skill Solace, which basically increases your damage the longer you're in combat. For Ilium, it's if you move a certain amount, you get bonus damage. So it's like an infinitely inferior version of Solace because most classes you don't really want to move around to begin with, unless you're like a zero or if you're like some class that has a lot of combos that move around a lot. I don't find Tide of Battle to be that great. And also people don't like the Ilium class, so I, I don't think it's like really a worthwhile Link skill at all. Anyways, that uh, pretty much covers all the Link skills descriptions in, in like uh, no way, shape or form. Uh, I'm gonna then talk about, I guess here's a tier list I'll be putting up on the screen right now. These are my recommended Link skills. Now I can understand why people are not too fond of Link skills. You have to train them all individually, they take a long time to level up, you have to get them to a pretty high level, and the bonuses don't seem that spectacular. But I'm going to explain to you guys why it actually makes quite a big difference. I will deactivate all of my Link skills right now, and I'll show you the increase and decrease in my range as well as the combat stats that I have. And uh, mind you, since I'm at a very high range, it's going to be very substantial, whereas like people at a lower range, it's not going to be as big. But in, to put it simply, every little bit counts, you know, you get extra stat here, you get boss damage here, you get all stat here, you get extra crit rate here, you get extra damage here, you get more attack and stat, you get crit damage, you get extra damage, you get more damage, you get more damage, you get more boss damage and crit rate, you get even more damage. These things do add up, and I'm going to show you guys exactly how much I lose out on by unlinking them. So currently we're at 32 mil, 35.7, and I'm going to unlink every skill I have. We basically lost like 5 million range. That's pretty big, if you think about it. We lost about 22% boss damage, we lost- we didn't lose any PDR because I didn't have the Lumion Link skill equipped, but we lost like a lot of critical hit rate, we lost like 22% from there as well, we lost a decent amount of crit damage, and we lost a pretty decent amount of stat. So Link skills actually play a huge part in upgrading your character, and it's one of the more like slow and steady increases. The reason why I recommend Link skills to be one of the more primary targets that you want to go for is because they are guaranteed. It's not like cubing, it's not like scrolling where you can get very unlucky and not get any potentials. It's not like Marvel Machine where there's just like absolutely no logic to it. Link skills are consistent and they are a very, I guess, reliable way of getting more damage. I talked to a lot of my friends who I've been helping out and also my patrons with like, you know, what kind of gear they have and stuff. And I'm pretty surprised that not many of them have Link skills active. Even if you get them to level 2, which is the level 120 link skill, that's still very substantial. Level 3 is 210, which no one wants to go for. I myself may not go for it at all, but it makes a huge difference. It can definitely play a big part. I'm going to re-equip every link skill so you can see what I have up here. So there's here, there's that, there's that, and there we go. Hybrid logic, mob rage, judgment, unfair advantage, Solace, Terms and Conditions, and then Focus Spirit. So yeah, we're back to where we were before. These things give quite a bit. So that's basically the way Link Skills work. I'll leave a uh, more detailed guide in the description below if you guys want to go check that out. But that's the basic gist of Link Skills. You level up a character, you transfer that Link Skill to another character, you stack up a whole bunch of Link Skills on a single character, and boom, you get a lot of damage. So that's what I recommend to a lot of people, people who have been asking me what character should I train next, or who should I use the burning event on or like what should I train during 2x, my recommendation is to just train whatever character you do not have the link skill for. 
Of course, train your main. If your main is um, not a certain level or if it's not the level you want it to be, you obviously want to train that character first. But for like burning characters and stuff, I do recommend you make link skills because that's usually what I burn my characters on anyway. I will see you guys in the next video and have yourselves a good morning, noon, or night. Take care.